On a cold winter night in 1937, Nikola Tesla stepped outside at midnight from his hotel New Yorker to make his regular commute to the cathedral and library to feed the pigeons. While crossing a street a couple of blocks from the hotel, Tesla was struck by a moving taxi cab and was thrown to the ground. And on the 7th of January, 1943, at the age of 85, Tesla died alone. He owed the hotel a considerable sum of money for rent and had promised them a special secret device held in his room safe. The safe was opened by John G. Trump, a professor at MIT. What he found inside was surprising. A Wheatstone Bridge. Is the Wheatstone Bridge related to Tesla's death ray? I have no idea, but I know a man who does. Mandit Mark, he kindly offered to explain to us all what exactly is a Wheatstone Bridge. Just taking a break from fixing things, so I can tell you about the Wheatstone Bridge. Now, the Wheatstone Bridge was invented 100 years before Tesla announced his development of the death ray. Now, the Wheatstone Bridge is just a circuit that compares things. And in use, it's much like an old weighing balance. So you place your unknown object on one side, in this case an old Marconi valve, and that tips the pointer all the way to the left. Then you systematically start adding or subtracting the weight until you get it to balance. I think that's it. That's just shy of 36 grams if you needed to know. In the electrical world of volts and amps, there's many devices that restrict current, and understanding these is key to understanding any circuit. Sometimes you want to control the amount of resistance, sometimes you don't want any. So you need to be able to measure it. And in order to measure them, you need a power supply. I'm going to set an arbitrary 10 volts on here, just to make the numbers a bit easier, so you can follow this. Then plug them into this breadboard. Then I'm going to connect two identical resistors in a string or in series as the uh, electrical people call it and that's going from the positive to the negative supply. Now these two resistors make something called a voltage divider and right in the middle is where the voltage is divided. So if I measure the voltage from end to end there's our 10 volts and in the middle it's 5 volts. It's divided it in half. So if I set up another string of resistors in exactly the same way, the same values, I can expect the same results. So if I measure the voltage as we did before, end to end is 10 volts as it was before, and in the middle still 5 volts, or very close to. This is actually the Wheatstone Bridge right in front of you, four resistors. And the trick is to measure between these two points in the middle, the two nodes. And the difference here is pretty much zero. And we're measuring zero because the two sides are the same, they're balanced. It's like they're the same weight. So we can more easily measure how balanced these two sides are. I'm actually going to wire this current meter in there. It's very sensitive and actually measures microamps. That's millionths of an amp. So I'm just going to connect a wire from our node in the middle to this output terminal there. Same on this side to the blue terminal. Let's get a couple of crocodile clips off there. Connect them in there. Let's connect one lead on there. And on the other side, the other croc clip. There we go. Because Wheatstone Bridge compares the differences between the two resistor strings, it's completely impervious to changes in supply voltage. It makes no difference at all. And we're nearly all the way there to making the entire Wheatstone Bridge machine. All that's missing is a box of resistors of known values. A drawer full of loose resistors isn't very convenient, so I introduced the Decade Resistance Box. And this piece of equipment is basically a box of switches with accurately known resistors in there. You just select the one you want. Very handy. And this particular one lets you go from zero all the way to 99,999 ohms. Let's get another couple of test leads. And connect our resistor box into the circuit. So this resistor is now going to be replaced with that box of resistors. And it also means I can take this one out and put something else in that I want to measure. So I'll put this resistor in to measure exactly what it is, 
We see the needle is all the way over to the left. There's lots of current flowing this way. And just like using the weighing balance, we keep adding more large weights, or in this case, large resistances, until we see the needle move. But it swings the other side, so we know that's too much, so we go back one. Then we do the same here. Keep going. Back one, there we go, we're getting close. That looks pretty much bob on right there. So our Wheatstone bridge has measured 44,200 ohms. So we'll pull that out and pair it with a modern resistance meter. Not bad, eh? <laughs> just what we thought. In fact, the multimeter is what replaced the Wheatstone bridge, so you just don't see them anymore. But that circuit, the comparing circuit, is everywhere. I'm actually going to use a modern comparing chip. This is a comparator. I'm just going to stick it in there. The comparator chip replaces the sensitive current meter for making the higher or lower assessment. We'll put an LED on its output, but we will build the exact same Wheatstone bridge circuit as before. This side makes the target threshold, two identical resistors. And on this side is a resistive light sensor. Put a similar resistor down there. And now we connect the comparator chip's inputs to the nodes of the Wheatstone bridge. I'm sure you'll have seen this circuit working at home. It's very likely that the power source for the death ray was going to be a Tesla coil. However, the Tesla coil is a device that doesn't want any resistance. That would make it inefficient. Coils of wire store their energy in a magnetic field, and Tesla uses them in conjunction with capacitors that store their energy in an electric field. The constant swinging of energy from magnetic to electric field is at the heart of the Tesla coil. However, you can't measure the performance of coils and capacitors using a weak stone bridge. Clever people had already devised variations of the Wheatstone bridge that could measure these reactive components. The Maxwell bridge could measure inductance and the Wien bridge measures capacitance. And they'd both been around for at least 40 years before Tesla devised the death ray. So I'm pretty sure he would have had access to both of these. Does the Wheatstone bridge have a part to play in a death ray? I'm not so sure. What Tesla left behind in the hotel was equivalent to the modern multimeter. Pretty humble. I think what Tesla left was a message, and that message was, go and figure it out for yourself. Oh, that's great. Thank you, Mark, so much. We now all know what a Wheatstone bridge is and how it works. It's no longer a mystery. Was it a part of the Tesla death ray, or was it really just a modern multimeter with a very accurate way of measuring differences? So the object left in Tesla's safe to pay his hotel bill really doesn't shine a light on the bigger mystery of how the death ray actually worked. It's sadly looking that more and more the secrets of the death ray went to Tesla's grave. But just maybe, one interesting way to dig into the death ray is to ask, after Tesla died, what happened next? The Black Vault recently published everything the FBI have on Tesla. In these documents, it clearly states that there was a Department of Defense interest in his inventions. Memorandum for Mr. Ladd. On Friday, January the 8th, Mr. L.M.C. Smith called me in connection with the death of Nikola Tesla. He advised me that he was concerned about the possibility of enemy agents confiscating some of the trunks of Tesla, who had died on January the 7th. He understood that the War Department was interested in this matter and that apparently the Alien Property Custodian's Office was taking some action. And there was this, a fascinating more recent document that actually lists applications of Tesla's inventions that have been weaponized. First, Tesla claimed that the lightning balls which destroyed his equipment could be used to destroy aircraft. I have talked to Air Force personnel such as Redacted Engineer at Micro Networks who saw one inside his plane in flight and found Air Force personnel fear these RF balls as they call them. Second, it is a suspicion of mine that ball lightning, if injected with lithium, could produce a cheap fusion bomb. Third, and this may be no more than suspicion, 
the propulsion mode of ball lightning involves electrogravatic interaction, by which means air vehicles of revolutionary configuration may be constructed. There are no presently known laws of physics that can account for the propulsion 400 miles an hour or so when following an airliner. Other hitherto unsuspected applications may exist. None of these applications were the goal of Project Tesla, which centered on producing ball lightning as Tesla did and studying it as a plasma confinement technique for fusion reactors. Incidentally, Tesla's claim for setting up standing waves on the Earth's surface, wireless power, was erroneous and involved techniques similar to Project Sanguine. That is, using the Earth's atmosphere as a waveguide, Redacted is aware of our research, cordially redacted. By copy of this letter, along with the enclosure, I am notifying the CIA. Research into plasma, high-energy physics and directed energy weapons was not only going on in the US. The hidden history of Robert Watson Watt working on the stolen plans of the death ray at Orford Ness is a fabulous story and will unlock many secrets of that strange part of Eastern England and maybe its relationship to the Rendlesham Forest incident. It was so exciting for me, as you can tell, to collaborate with Mark. I really enjoy working with other people who can add interesting facts to these films which I introduce. So viewers, did you enjoy seeing Mark on this show and adding so much information from his electronics background? That's just what I want to do in the future. If you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up, share with friends and subscribe for more. Because as you know, because of everybody's knowledge, the truth can be out there.